Yeah. Excuse me. Hello, beautiful. Hello. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too. I'll meet myself because you know me, I won't stop talking. Okay. You look great. Okay, quite a few people come chiming in. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Oh, you're awesome. <laughs> Another handsome. <laughs> so, Mary Jane, where are you living these days? What city are you in? I'm in Arvada, Arvada, Colorado. Oh, okay. Oh, you're Nevada. Okay. Arva Arvada, Colorado, which is just like outside of Denver. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, everyone's auto, audio has connected, so we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, this is Kevin Lynch with the Sarah Project, and we or our, our webinar today is how a single individual can make a difference in the fight against HIV criminalization. And your presenters are Brian Jones and Davina Connor. And I'm going to turn the time over to them and have them introduce themselves. Okay. So, hi, everybody. Everybody knows who I am, I hope. <laughs> Davina Connor. Um, me and Brian decided to do this. It's called uh, How a Single Person, Just Like He Said, Can Make a Difference in the Fight in HIV Criminalization, HIV Criminalization Laws, and How One Person Can Make Two, and Then Three, and Then Four by speaking up. Um, I am the Creative Engagement Outreach Specialist for Prevention Access Campaign. I am a, a um, I can't even get it out, a former board member of uh, PWN Colorado. I mean, a former co-chair of PWN Colorado, former board member for Ryan White, uh, Denver Planning Council. Um, I am a contributing, a uh, writer for HIV.net and a right. former advisory board member for Janssen Pharmaceutical. Brian. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna uh, ask if we could get the slides up. <laughs> he said introduce yourself. <laughs> okay, Leah, let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> Does that mean Kevin sharing his screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought I, I thought you all were sharing screen, but let me. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to find your slides. Give me just a sec. Mm -mm. Well, anyway, my name is Brian C. Jones. I'm a person who's been thriving with AIDS, going into my 38th year. Um, I've been involved in uh, criminalization for the past 10 years, uh, responsible for mobilizing Ohio around our, our HIV, modernizing our HIV criminalization laws. And um, I was on a panel yesterday called uh, Activism and Agitators in Advocacy. And a lot of times they call people like myself agitators, but when we're just people who tell the truth, really the other people are agitated. So I'm not really an agitator. <laughs> it's not my fault that you get agitated by me telling the truth. So um, we will get started. This, okay. Um, I got it, Kevin. You got it? Yeah. Okay. As soon as I can get to it, I can't get to it. <clears throat> there we go. Thank you, Davina. No problem. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, how one person can make a difference. The fight against HIV criminalization laws. How two people can make a difference in the fight against HIV criminalization laws. Okay. 
uh, Davina kind of positively known as uh, positively D. I call her PD. Uh, she told you quite a bit about herself, uh, but she was the first train that that uh, launched uh, or the first first boat that set a sail when it came to the Free New Shine Coalition. Um, like I said, my name is Brian Jones. I've been uh, driving with AIDS for 38 years, and I've been a part of advocating probably half that time. Um, but people like uh, Davina and myself, the reason for this presentation is because we were two ships uh, fighting in the night or sailing in the night, and somehow we managed to, I saw her ship, which was a lot bigger than mine, on social media, uh, talking about the same guy that I had been reading about, who was Nushan Williams. And I felt, finally, there's someone who feels the way that I do. And I kind of screamed, and I called her. And that's how we became one person, how one person can make a difference, and how one became two. Next slide, please. Now, before we get started with the slides, I'm so sorry. This wasn't supposed to happen like this. Okay. I apologize. Before we get started with the slides, we forgot to let you guys know that we're gonna put a question in the chat. And can you please answer the question by messaging me in the chat privately? Because will the question to... be in the chat or will it come up on a poll question? It'll come up poll. on a poll. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll watch the poll right now and I'll see it on their main screen. Okay. There's the question. Name the condition for which Nushan is being incarcerated. And you can go ahead and send that in my, in my chat privately. And this is a raffle. So there's a great prize a raffle. involved. The first person to answer. Also, anyone who is directly related to the Free New Shine Coalition is not eligible to be a part of this particular uh, raffle slide. Okay. So while you're doing that, uh, is there a slide before that, Davina? Yeah, but I can't get to it. How do we get that poll box? Okay. Are you ready for the poll to go away? Yes. Well, we're you. just gonna we're gonna <laughs> move forward. Go back, please. I mess it up bad. <laughs> and she's the most experienced one <laughs> between the two of us. So if I was doing it, it would really be awful. <laughs> I apologize. There's my face again. You okay. can never go wrong showing my face. The media is most powerful entity on earth. They have, see how it just disappears? I didn't touch anything. The okay, media is the most powerful on? entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. So Brian, go ahead and discuss this one. I can't say that um, for me, I always have to say we have to have a Sankofa moment when it comes to HIV and AIDS. We've got to look back over the history and the narrative that has been betrayed, specifically about, uh, about black folks and people of color. If we think about to the early years in 1981, when those four, uh, when the media first reported about those four uh, white gay men who had the same strange gay cancer, uh, they failed to mention that in that same 12 year, 12 month calendar year, that 86 black people had contracted the same gay cancer, but the media didn't report on that. We tend to, to take hold of the, the narrative that was portrayed in the earlier years and the narrative didn't include us. The narrative will also have you believe, if you watch that, uh, Black people were not a part of the earlier years of advocacy. If you think about ACT UP, if you look at ACT UP, it, you will see a lot of white gay men and white uh, 
lesbians. But Black people were on the forefront uh, when it came to developing the Denver Principles, when it came to NAPWA, uh, being, uh, being on the scene, being that organization of, of for people of color to rally and advocate uh, for HIV and AIDS, you would also believe, would be led to believe that women were not a part of the earlier advocacy years. They said, that's where the slogan came from, women don't get AIDS, they just die from it. Because women were not included. Because mm -hmm. when the CDC started to release this data uh, about these conditions that meant that people could get health care, they failed to mention conditions that are solely affected women such as cervical cancer. So a lot of women end up succumbing to the uh, to co uh, complications around HIV and AIDS because they were not included in the narrative. So this is why it's important for single individuals to step out and fight and fight as hard as they can because you will find like-minded people as you advocate and do activism on your own because each and every one of our voice is valuable, very valuable by ourselves. But we find at least one other person, uh, the, the Christian people say when two are gathered in his name, when right. two are gathered in advocacy, we can give you hell. Um, Damina? Yeah, I, I'll just say we're our own best advocates. Um, so if you put away the fear and speak up, speak up at what you believe in. Um, you never know who's going to join you. You know, when you're passionate about something, you want to keep talking about it. You never know who is going to join you. So nothing will happen until you speak up and, and get that message out there to see who's going to join you. Um, I started in this alone, and now there's a coalition that stand behind Nushan, which is, is, is beautiful. Um, so imagine being incarcerated, and not just Nushan, anyone who is in, in incarcerated for HIV criminalization, and, and you have no one the whole time that you're there, and then all of a sudden, all these people just start joining you. There was no HIV education for him. He just started learning about that um, three or four years ago when we got in contact with him. He knew nothing. He knew nothing about viral load. He knew nothing about his T cells, he knew nothing about U equals U. So he's learning a lot. Um, mass incarceration is real, y'all. And he did do his time. And, and that's what we're fighting for because he did his time. So we're gonna go on to the next one. Uh, Carrie, uh, someone asked the question, if you signed on to the coalition, that's a different thing, but if you've been an active part of the coalition. So Carrie, I would say to you, yes, you can go ahead and answer the question. But if you've been an active part of this coalition, uh, I would say no, because you would know the answer. Uh, but there was a quote prior to this one that was Malcolm X saying that something to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing, I think he said something like, the media will have you believing those who are guilty, innocent, and those who are innocent to be guilty. And that uh, supports what I was saying about the narrative that the CDC portrayed in the early years, the CDC and our other health organization, they made it seem like that black folks were not at risk or women at risk. Uh, they didn't start recording our numbers as black people until 1983. And even then, all that while, we have been contracting HIV, uh, contracting AIDS diagnosis at that time. And then they started reporting our numbers. And even in 1983, they only reported those people who had the serious uh, illnesses of AIDS uh, that were defining AIDS, even though they hadn't given out a definition of that. They did give some conditions. They only talked about those people who had that diagnosis, as opposed to those people who tested for, po po who had the positive antibody even though they didn't have an official HIV test. Even when I was uh, diagnosed, they didn't have an official test, but they did have conditions that they knew that these people were possibly uh, people with a diagnosis. So by the time they started to, to really report our numbers, the floodgates had opened, it was too late. And that's how black folks and people of color have became most impacted because they held off so long 
on and reporting our numbers because even these white gay men that they claim to hate, they still put their privilege over the privilege of black folks and people of color's health and being proactive as it comes to relates to HIV and AIDS. I hope people get that. I always have to go back because it's important for me that we understand our positioning. Black folks, we're not more at risk for HIV and AIDS because we have more behaviors or more sexual partners or more at risk. It's the social and structural disparities that keep us at risk for contracting HIV. Things that we have really no control of. It's a system that means us no good. So as it relates to New Shine, it was important that I really respected the fact that Davina, as a black woman living with HIV, was on social media and she had posted something about New Shine. I had been reading, I read an article early on about New Shine, Nico Bretaramas, and another guy uh, who was living with HIV, but something about the New Shine article didn't resonate. And I tell people, I wrote a, a piece for Pod Magazine about New Shine, and it said that I watched him, I was watching the news with my family and nobody knew my diagnosis and they were talking about this HIV monster. And I was like, I just froze because I didn't want to move because I didn't want no one to know that I had a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, he inspired me. This man was sitting in this courtroom where everything they were saying was negative about him and pointing a finger at him saying that he was a monster and he was this and he was that. But he sat there with his hell head high. I, I, I mean, he just sat there with his, his head up, no shame, no, just the feeling. It was so inspirational to me as a person who was also living with, with AIDS at that time. Um, I saw, I got inspiration from him. He inspired me. There was nowhere at the time where I could see people for inspiration or someone to uplift me. But here in the most unlikely place, this guy being prosecuted, persecuted, he gave me strength. And it's funny how life comes full circle where I started to read that article and I saw D make that post and we became connected. One plus two, right? Okay, oh, that so, other slide, I'm sorry, that was a slide. It was, it was talking about, we are who we've been waiting for. Uh, a lot of times we wait for other people. And I'm sorry to, to, to you know, y'all know I talk too much. So uh, sometimes we wait for other people when we realize it's like the Wizard of Oz, click your heels together three times, you've had it all the time. We have what we need. We are what we need. And that means that each and every one of us has the capacity to, to, to lead a fight. Davina. Yeah, I think Brian just talked about this slide already a little bit about how uh, Black folks are most impacted and, and why we, we are impacted. But to go ahead and touch on, we'll go to the next slide because Brian already uh, touched on this one. So there was a question that was asked to me um, in 2017. Um, Nushan asked me, why D? And, and the question that the answer that I gave him was because they had to choose someone and he was the someone that they chose. And the reason why me and Brian chose to use our, our presentation re in regards to Nushan is because Sometimes the media could make you think that someone is bad, that they've done something wrong. But when you're on the other side, it's like, I always say like, you can read a book. And then when you only read one page and close the book, you can never learn exactly what the problem is or what the book is about. So just Looking at the one page when it comes to New Shine and all this information that was out there about 300 people and 500 women contracted HIV. Um, joining us in this coalition in this fight will help you to learn and realize that this was just the media 
putting wrong information out there against one man who was 19, 20 years old, scared, um, had no support, no family, a public defender, and was told that he can take a deal. And if you take this deal, you know, you'll be out. You won't be in here 20 years and he'll be able to see his grandmother. So he took this deal, but he's still gone 24 years. So I remember him asking, well, I should have just took the deal because I would have been out by now, which is probably true. Um, how do you guys feel? You know, how can you answer that question in stating and saying how, why do you think HIV criminalization laws affect Blacks um, more than our white counterparts? And so the next slide, we're going to go ahead and show you the full coalition video that no one has seen. And then after this is over with, we'll have a conversation with all you guys and answer any questions that you have in regards to Nushan. Born during the 60s, growing up during the civil rights movement, I learned early on that black folks, and particularly black men, had to fight extra hard for their existence and very survival. Diagnosed with AIDS in the 80s, I also learned that in order to survive, I had to fight extra hard for equal access to care. Fast forward to the 90s, Nushan Williams, sentenced in the 90s, and is still incarcerated to this day. He is a black man living with HIV and unjustly being held under civil confinement. I am Nushan We. We are one. And if you believe it or not, mass incarceration has been a form of keeping us enslaved. I am a black woman living with HIV who fights for the rights of people like myself living with HIV. And if we don't stand for what is right, then we stand for nothing at all. I am Nushan Williams, and I stand with him. He did his time. Let him go. I am Nushan Williams. The system has always failed us. Racial justice, criminal justice, human rights, and because one man, my brother, a black man, locked away for the last 23 years, kept away from his mother, sister, nephews, and other family members, denied his due process, and has been racially profiled. I too am Nushan Williams. I'm a white woman who's not living with HIV. Nushan Williams' fight is my fight because the systems of policing and mass incarceration that continue to hold him in detention. Sorry guys, why is it not playing? Sorry about that. Even after he served his required time are racist and anti-black. White people are responsible for calling out and dismantling the systems of oppression that we built and continue to benefit from. I stand against state violence against black bodies. I stand with Nushan Williams. I am a beautiful black woman thriving with HIV for 19 years. I am a mother, I am a sister, I am a daughter, I am an aunt, I am a grandmother. I have a young son. People living with HIV have dealt with injustices, discrimination, and stigma for years. Nushan Williams has done his time. This injustice has got to stop. 
I stand with Nushan Williams. I am Nushan Williams. free, please. Set him free indeed. He's no different from George Floyd who could not breathe, who just wanted to be free from poverty and free from racism. Set Nushan Williams free. This is the time, and the time is now. I am a woman living with HIV for 25 years. My brother deserves to be free and to be free with his family so that he can live the life that he deserves to live. I stand for Nushan Williams. I am Nushan Williams. I am a black woman living with HIV for 23 years. The injustice of black and brown lives must stop. Civil rights, racial justice, human rights, HIV criminalization, mass incarceration, one man locked up for 23 years. New Sean Williams, he's done his time and he's been denied his due process. It's time for him to be released. It takes a village to save one life. I stand with Nushan Williams. I am Nushan Williams. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. I'm a black woman living with HIV and I fight for the rights of those like me. Nushan Williams did his time, set him free. I demand justice for Nushan Williams and I will not stop until he is free. I am Nushan Williams. 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 Every time I see that video, it just touches me in a certain way. And I do know there were some technical difficulties doing that. I don't know if there was a barrier in front of the screen uh, like it was on mine, but this just reflects how in our fight, they're gonna be barriers. They're gonna be obstacles. They're gonna be things that are gonna be put in front of you to frustrate you. But we as advocates and we as people who care and who live in purpose, We've got to push through because those are superficial things that will that will be put there to frustrate you. And it took us a long time to get to the point where me and De, uh, Davina were able to unite. And when I first had the pleasure to speak to Nushan, I was yeah. moved beyond words because he was a humble gentleman, very strong, very educated, who I gained strength from just talking to him, being in a position that he's been in where he felt like nobody cared about him, that, that he was lost. Um, and what was important to me and Davina in this fight is
Did he go away? So I'll go ahead and talk. I can't. They wanted to pick and choose which lives matter. Okay. We can't pick and choose which black lives matter. If we are to fight for black lives matter and, and, and fight for those who have been uh, incarcerated under these, uh, uh, these unjust laws, then we've got to fight for everyone. And Nushan is my brother. He is my family. And like I stated in this article, when I walk up and I see a group of people jumping on my family, I don't even have right. to know who's right or wrong. I'm going to jump into the fight <laughs> and we can figure out who's right or wrong later. But that's someone who's part of my family and I stand up for family. And even with the situation, people, we've got to understand that everything you read on the internet, internet or from my good girlfriend, Miss Google, is not true. Just because you saw it on the internet does not make it does true. Does not mean it's true. Do your research. Do your homework. Ask questions. Ask the horse instead of, to, you know, if you don't hear from the horse's mouth, then don't believe it. And that's how in our advocacy, we've got to take our own stand. And a lot of times when you, um, advocacy is about speaking up for what may be the most unpopular opinion in the room. And I said this yesterday, why should I have mute my voice? If I gotta be uncomfortable in the room, everybody in the whole damn room is gonna be uncomfortable because it's important for us to take a stand and speak about what's right. Davina. <laughs> This is all about knowing your lane. Know your lane, stay in your lane. Define what your lane is. Because me and Davina were on two different highways and somehow our cars managed to merge onto the same route. And we picked up other cars along the way. So we're gonna have an open conversation about what is your lane? Do you have a lane? Because I tell people, in some cases, I don't have a whole a lane. The whole damn highway is mine. Because I will go here and go there. After three my days for 38 years, I got an opinion on most things. And I can speak personally about almost everything in the HIV and AIDS continuum. So we're going to open this up. If anybody wants to feel free to raise your hand. We have, we have one more uh, question for you guys. And hopefully you guys can answer this one in the chat. Just leave it in my chat. So what state was the first to appeal their HIV criminalization laws? Send it to me privately in the chat. We to repeal. Work. Sorry, that's a typo on my, half, my behalf. It's to repeal the HIV criminalization laws. We're going to play the Jeopardy song. Doom, 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 <laughs> this was the last slide, right? Yeah, that's the last slide. I don't slide. see any uh, options. Or... Okay. There aren't options. You need to just answer it. Did somebody say that? Or was that just yeah, me? just put it in the chat. So we want to thank Catherine Hanson and the entire staff at uh, the Center for HIV Law and Policy for working with me and Brian constantly in meetings. Can um, you take the chat thing off? Yeah, it was just nonstop. Okay. And then we want to also thank Cerro Project for all the work that they have done, inviting us here. Um, having Nushan highlighted this year was overwhelming, but we were happy about it. So we want to thank Cerro Project for all the work that they have done. And I want to thank Tammy personally for changing my way of thinking when it comes to HIV criminalization, because I would not be sitting here right now doing this. Um, Need to tell y'all the first the first person who inboxes Davina privately wins the raffle. Not on the general for everyone, but privately, because that's the only thing we have to go for. Go for. Go by. And then, then we want to thank uh, Nushan, of course. Um, for letting us in his lives. 
and um, allowing us to learn a little more about him and his case and his life and how he grew up. So we're gonna open this up to conversation because it's important for us as community to be able to listen to each other, to bring in each other and to include each other. So if someone has a comment they wanna make, I just read uh, Sean Mark's comment. I think, it's that, I think it's Sean Marks, I said it right. Uh, yeah, a comment about he came here to figure out what his lane is, but after hearing the conversation, he's right. The whole damn lane, you know, the whole highway really belongs to us. You just need to decide where you want to sit, where you want to be, whether you want to be driving the car or ride shotgun, or whether you want to be that person in the back seat deciding how the, how the conversation will go. We all can ride together, or you can ride by yourself. Don't be afraid to drive by yourself. Just don't drive drunk is what they say. Right. <laughs> Have a clear purpose in what you're doing. And a lot of people may look at you as being impaired because people are going to point fingers and say, oh my God, they're not going to understand you. And Audre Lorde says, there are no single issue fights because people don't live single issue lives. Right. So we've got to understand there's a place for all of us in this fight because we all have so many different issues. And HIV and AIDS looks different depending on where you live, how you live, what state you live in, what county you live in. So with that being said, there's no one, one single way to do this thing. And me and Davina just happened to figure this out as we went along this road. We didn't know what we were doing. But we knew something had, I had no to be clue. Done. <laughs> yeah, we no knew clue. Something had to be done. And we kept talking and we kept talking to HIV law and policy, bless them for, for supporting us, even when we were speaking loud and we felt no one was listening. And 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 to make a point about that when you said no one was listening, I mean I used to cry. I, I mean, literally cry, like, why nobody not listen to me to help this man? I thought I was doing something wrong. I was getting bad messages from people telling me I need to shut up. I mean, the messages were terrible that he's a, he's a rapist, he's a child molester. I mean, I done heard it all. And the point that we always go back to is he did his time. He did his time. 24 years is too long. He's in 12 years past his time. And it's time for him to get out. And he needs us as a group of people who live with HIV because it could have been us in this situation. So why are we not fighting for one person that they're making an example out of? And, and, and if you sit back, join us and you'll learn a little more each time, you're gonna be shocked at all these reasons why he's in there. Um, HIV was mentioned over a thousand times in his case. But they keep saying it's not about HIV, so why is he still in there? Mm -hmm. um, there's just one excuse after the other. Um, January, he did have, finally, after five or six years, had an annual. You're supposed to get an annual every year. He finally had one. Mm -hmm. the, the, result, the answer was supposed to come back in 30 days. This is June. They still don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always something when it mm -hmm. comes to him. It's like they're trying to figure out a way to keep him in there, but now there's no reason for him to still be in there. But this really, they wanted him to so die. Long for them to come with an answer. They um, wanted him to die in silence. <clears throat> yeah. uh, they took him into the civil confinement, thinking that nobody cared. And had we not taken up the reins, Newsham may have expired without anybody knowing. And that's what they really wanted to happen. Uh, uh, Deidre Johnson put in the chat that she's lost friends because of participating in this campaign. We're not here to convince anyone okay. about Nushan's innocence or guilt. The bottom line is he did his time. He did his time. And also, either you're going to get it or you're not going to get it. If you don't get it, more power to you. You can move on and do what you want. But we, those people who, who get it without the whole explanation and the back and forth, we're not trying to do a back and forth and convince you. If you don't inherently get it, then we need to move on. Also, I want to say this. We talk a lot about MEPA 
meaningful or greater involvement of people living with HIV or AIDS. And we talk about that as it relates to outside organization. We've got to start having more meaningful involvement of each other, respecting each other in our positioning and, and our point of view instead of persecuting each other because we're asking organizations to have meaningful or greater involvement. But we don't really respect each other in this space. Uh, and that's and just these, the way I feel. I was just on another session of, with Kamaria and Deirdre. You know, these laws affect all of us, not just one person. It affects all of us as a group. For me, all of us here who live with HIV, we're a family. So these laws affect every single one of us. And if I was told that one of you were being criminalized, I'm going to stand and fight for you no matter how they said this, this, how it was, how you, what, whatever you did, how it was done, it doesn't matter to me because you are part of my family and I will be there somebody, and fight somebody got the hand right. to help you get out. You got Robert Suttle, Monique Howe, um, Ken, Kenneth Pinnock, Pinnock, I can never say Ken's last name. Um, and then you have Carrie. There's many more who have somebody's been got their hand right. I don't know how to, I don't know so how many to, more to bring a person. People who have been criminalized and their lives have been ruined because of this. Why are people who are criminalized when they when 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 all this is said and done, they have to register as a sex offender? We are not vectors, you guys. And so we have to stand together and fight when it comes to criminalization. I was one of those people who believed in criminalization laws and that people needed to be criminalized. Again, if it wasn't for Tammy, I would not be here today. These laws need to be modernized and we need to fight for every single individual who is being criminalized for HIV, no matter who it is. Again, I have we're a question. not trying to convince you, but- I'm listening. Oh, yes. no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, yes. Somebody has their hand raised. Somebody has their hand raised. Nisi? It's Nisi. Gee, how's everybody doing today? Hi, um, how are you? Good. Brian and Dee, I want to just say thank you for all of the work that you've led, along with other people that may be around the table with you all. You know, when I first heard of New Shine, I want to say respectively, Dee provided the information for me to read. And when you're not at the table and you get those myths versus facts, it's very murky. So I mm. challenge everyone that is in this session today to really educate yourself and ask the difficult questions. Read it for yourself. Read it twice if you got to. Um, I had you know, conversations with Deidre on this situation and she enlightened me on a trip that we were on of her views, her opinions, her values, her beliefs. And I read the information Dee gave me again. And I am on board with New Shine. I am a black woman, that MIFA is not always utilized in our workspace places. I am ready to fight the workplace, workforce industry, as well as the decriminalization laws surrounded around our men's Reyes laws of who we can expose and all of this. We're still dealing with that in the workplace, and we may not be exposing anyone to HIV, but we are being harassed because we want to speak up. We've been retaliated on because we want to speak up about our views. And you say you have this fucking open door policy about coming to leadership and you don't <laughs> measure up to what you want to say. Right. So mm -hmm. I think policies need to be changed in that mindset too, because ultimately what it does, it affects us emotionally, physically, spiritually, have a real headache moment. And how you authentically are supposed to hold up your role and responsibility working with corporations that overall get money to serve us. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing their part. So that's my two cents. Yeah. Next up. And, and that's the Thank thing. You. We all have the capacity to be leaders wherever we are and, and, and fight this fight. You don't have to have a national organization behind you. But if you keep fighting and keep raising your voice loud enough, resources will come to you resources will help you and our greatest resource is each other 
We're greater than any funding or any other national organization that has a funding stream. We've got to start realizing that we are our greatest resources because there are people here. I see Vanessa Johnson is on here. And Vanessa Johnson has been a part of this fight. It, bring, it, makes, it, it makes me emotional to know that her being a part of NAPWA during those early years when Denver principles were, were uh, composed, people who have been a part of this fight since that time, those are the education that we need to see, the people that we need to, 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 to get resources from and understanding yeah. and give us the strength to move through this fight. See, a lot of us forget about our past and forget about those people and forget that the greatest resource is the person sitting next to you and think that national exposure or they want to be HIV famous. There is this, this, what the real crime is, there is no fame and fortune and being an advocate about no, HIV. That's what the crime is. It you know, is not. We, work hard, we don't get paid, but it's about the mission that we're on. So I'm a, I, somebody had their hand yeah, raised. Brian, Brian, it was Canna. Canna, why don't you go ahead and ask your question? What question was that? She... Tana, Tana had her hand up. Tana, are you still on? I, I had my I had my hand up. Um, you know, for for me, I'm just now uh, learning more and more about uh, Nushan Williams. And for me, I don't think anybody living with HIV should be criminalized. But this is this is horrible that we are in the 21st century. And these laws are stem from slavery because that's what uh, these prisons are part of keeping black people in slavery. But for Nushan Williams, that could be me. That could be any one of us. So this fight is for all advocates to join in. And for me, I am all in because this really could be me. This could be my grandchild. This could be my own son. So this is very, very important. Thank this you, I'm, I'm yeah. too emotional. I'm done. Somebody else has and, the and hand it, it, was just like, it was just like I said in the video. It takes a village to save one life. Yeah. It, it, it it's not doing in this mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. By myself was really hard. Yeah. It takes um, a village to say it, but it can take one rabble rouser. Right. It can take one rabble rouser to, to bring it to life. Because if it wasn't for you fighting uh, relentlessly, D, and me finding your ship in the night, this happens to, to just run into you on social media, then we could have still been fighting independently. Even though that village is there. Sometimes you got to say, knock on everybody's door and tell everybody in the village, y'all need to come out on your porch because I right. got something. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, Somebody had their hand raised. Go ahead, Wahida. Yeah. Wahida Shabazz, the legend. Good, after good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for putting on this um on on this 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 uh, uh workshop is is a whole lot of information, and uh, you know I support you know the work that you all are doing, and I'm wondering like um coming up in New York since New York is opening now they're about to have this huge, uh everybody come out event in New York I just read about it I wish I had more details, but I'm wondering if um if we all are planning to do anything like shaming whoever this judge is. I don't know if we can raise money to put a billboard in front of the judge's house, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. But I'm thinking that we need to like do something to uh, to bring shame to the criminal justice system um, in that state. And I'm thinking that we could use um, public events that are, they're about to open up and they're having all these public events. And how do we get these messages out during the public events, and how do we shame the um, the um, decision makers? Um, that was our next and, step too, why he yeah, did, um, and then we did to do get a group plenary. of folks together, and we all go down there. Um, I was yeah. saying I'll sleep there morning, noon, and night till somebody hear our voice. But it's it's time for something to happen mm -hmm. in Absolutely. order for people to hear this. And there's some people that didn't even know that they they forgot about him. Like Newshine, we thought he was dead. You know, and that's terrible. It's that's terrible. A disgrace. 
But, but we that, did do at the plenary. We did have people tweeting the attorney general. And we're going to ask the same of you now uh, who yes. weren't a part of the open plenary. Uh, that's something we could do in the meanwhile. But I do think that enough is enough. It's time for a physical action. And yeah. we'll be working on that. Uh, uh, thank you, Wahida. Wahida always said, if you're not at the table, yeah. <laughs> then you're on the menu. And exactly. we're always on the menu. And Nushan is the, the head entree. But yes, I always take it a step further and say is that El Haj Malik Chabaz, who we know as Malcolm X said, you're not considered a diner just by sitting at the table. You've got to eat something. And yes. you're not considered an advocate just by sitting at the table. If you're not eating something that's on your plate and looking at your neighbor and saying, you're not going to eat that, I'll eat that too. Meaning I'm going to take up your fight too. Then you're not an advocate. Get out of the mindset that just by being at the table makes you an advocate. If you're not actually Amen. eating something or right. doing something, then you're not advocating. And it's not just about your own personal fight. You've got to take up the fight of the community and those who can't speak for themselves to be advocates. Yeah, um, Brian and Davina, I would love to be a part of going forward with whatever strategy that you have oh, to make yeah. this uh, more public and to actually figure out who we need to be shaming um, in public we have to follow them around to their fancy dinners or whatever we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm really down for that. We appreciate Somebody it. else I, has I, the hand I, I love y'all. But Wahida, I want to give Philadelphia, Philadelphia fight. I yeah. give y'all y'all props because as a community, Philadelphia don't take no shit. <laughs> I must yeah. say <laughs> that it's a lot of Wahidas in Philadelphia. Right. Thank you, Brian. Okay, Olga, you had a question? Uh, yeah, um, this goes back to uh, when you guys were talking about, you know, finding out about, you know, Nishan, uh, Nishan, uh, my link, my stroke won't let me say the name right, but you know who I'm talking, what I'm saying. Um, I didn't know nothing about it. And then what little I did see, it all, you know, was like so negative and so, ne you know, and then as I read the right facts and everything, I'm like, oh my God, this is just so terrible that a human being has to go through this. And then I'm looking at it like me as a white person, would I go through the same thing? Would I be targeted that way as a white person? I don't think I would because mm -hmm. of my skin color, you know? So, um, you know, I'm all in for it because I realize the difference there, you know, just, you know, with this face, the skin color. Yeah, thank you, Olga. <laughs> uh, there's did, Naima O'Neill has did, her did hand. Naima, go ahead. Naima? I can't, she can't unmute. Naima? Yeah, I can't unmute. Maybe her, her hand was not. raised and she had to get off because she may be at work. Uh, but we're getting close to that time. Uh, so Davina, Marcus, can you, see you guys, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Sorry, I couldn't get off mute. So, and I'm driving. So, I am. Um, I when I first heard about it, and I learned a lot of it from Brian, um, because we we did work together and we share information together. But I guess my question and my comment is, how do we help? I have a lot of clients who are younger clients who are getting caught up like Nusha and they're being, um, their life is being cut short because they're, they're being labeled as sex offenders. They are getting these felonies on the record so they can never get a real job. As a social worker, what would you all advice be to me on how to, to um, maybe steer my patients, my clients away from um, getting caught up in the system because they are. And it's, and it's really heartbreaking to see kids going to jail so young and maybe they're not being civilly confined as long as Dusha has been, but they shouldn't be going to jail for not disclosing their status, especially when they haven't shared their virus. But I think for me, Naima, I think We've got to constantly work to change the culture of our planning councils and these other boards that uh, 
that work and ASOs that work from a paternalistic standpoint, they feel like they know what's best for us as people living with HIV. We need to go back to those programs that teach acceptance. We don't have anything that teaches young people acceptance of the status. Those uh, forces that be still tell people, be careful who you disclose to, that HIV is something that you should keep secretive. Even when we talk about the word disclosure, which is still a stigmatizing word because disclosure says new or stigmatizing, new or secret information. Your status is not a secret information. It's yours to share. So just like the work that we do in here in Cleveland, we as people living with HIV have got to start empowering young people, letting them know that there is strength in taking ownership of your status. Also, I want to say that there are a lot of people in our community who feel like people should be prosecuted because they're holding on to, to hate, anger, resentment. Mm. In order for us as people to heal, we've got to forgive. Not saying you don't have you have to forget what a person does, but in order for you as a person to heal, you've got to learn to forgive. And if you can't forgive and understand the, how these laws are rooted in and everything that's wrong, then you'll never heal as a person. So collectively, uh, I'm going to be quiet and let somebody else add uh, their opinion to it. Brian Wahida asked a question in the chat. Can this campaign be brought to the new AIDS czar at ONAP? What was that? Can it be brought where? Let me see. To the new AIDS czar at ONAP. Yeah, I, I don't know his name, but I know we just got a new AIDS czar. Everybody's excited about it. Well, Nushan does have some great attorneys that just came on board. They took his case pro bono. Um, so we're just, you know, we're just keeping our fingers crossed. He and I think, I think another thing is, now, but we still we, we, we feel like everybody fight for him. Um, when I first, when I first jumped on board, it was it was odd to me that there were no one, there was no one else but his white counterparts that were fighting for him. That was really strange to me. Um, we have to fight for our black and brown people, you guys. We oh, Hal Phillips. Yeah, I've had a lot of conversations with Hell uh, in reference to the end of the epidemic. So we have seven. We have about three minutes left. Uh, Alicia mm -hmm. Diggs is the one that won. The answer was Texas. The other question that we posed, no one answered it. So Alicia, I'll be mailing you out one of these amazing free new shine T-shirts. Um, and the answer yeah, no to one the answer first one. Was, See, I the first one, I answered the first one. What was the first one? What did you well, say? You, you can't answer. You're part of the National Coalition. You you can't oh, answer. I answer. Oh, okay. Who is that? <laughs> Stacy. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, Brian and Dee, there's one more question that maybe we can end on. I think it's an important one from Dr. Right, Perry. People need to get past. Is, people need uh, to get past what he was. Is that what you're saying? People need to get past what he's convicted of. The point is he did his time and deserves due process under the law. Yes, absolutely, he does. Mm -hmm. He's been denied his due process. And it, it, this is not right, you know? It, it's not right for this man, since he was 19, 20 years old, to still be gone after 12 years after his time, which is 24 years. Um, a lot, real quick, what a lot of people don't know, and again, I'm not trying to change your mind. I just need you to understand why I yell so loud is because his life was actually my life when I was growing up, um, when uh, me and my sister were left alone as teenagers. But not only that, how can someone know that they're living with HIV if they just found out when everybody else in the town found out that they had it? That's the, that's what I'm gonna leave you with. Yeah, there's no way he could have known. And Nushan Williams is what I'm gonna leave on. <laughs> and you could too, and you could be Nushan too. Yeah. Thank you all. I really appreciate people getting on and I really appreciate the love of community for supporting us in this. Thank you, everybody. Hope you join the call. Love you. Love you Love y'all, y'all. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Love you all. Thank you.